Cool. Okay. Thank you for joining us on VA. A Las Vegas woman who asked not to be identified has apologized to the Filipino community for her racist rant that was caught on video and that has now gone viral. It all started because of an argument over scattered leaves with her Filipino neighbor, Dexter Manawa. And where did that come from? From some piece of manila ass ghetto living under a tarp piece of land. Manawa, who can be heard on this video, also shot this video of his neighbor hurling anti-Filipino slurs at him, which he then posted on Facebook. At one point, his neighbor likened him and his people to orange savages. Oh. You guys can blow up more fireworks like you've never seen fire before because you're so stupid. You're like orange savages. Because we're like one generation out of the jungle. Like one clock wearers. Love it. His neighbor also complained about how Filipinos are sucking up the country's resources. Love it. You're going to be so popular. Whatever. No one cares about you. When interviewed by the local station KNTV, the unidentified woman says her rant was not directed at the Filipino community but toward Manawa. She says she is afraid of retaliation after the video made around on social media. For his part, Manawa has removed the video from his Facebook page. He says, quote, the decision... It was a quiet Tuesday afternoon in this Los Angeles parking lot. Said, until this happened. Oh my God, this Filipino nurse Quigo Ignacio recounted this incident on her Facebook wall and shared video, which has now gone viral. In her post, Ignacio says she was eating lunch in her parked car when a woman pushing a cart with a baby inside hit her. Ignacio didn't bother to check for damage. But when she looked up, she was greeted by a series of racially charged verbal assaults. She began filming the altercation. You screamed in front of a baby? No. Yes, you did. No, you yelled at me? Everybody knows. Everybody knows you yelled at me? Oh, you said, I'm trying to baby. With the baby and a man alongside the unidentified woman, things got worse. They hit my car and yelled at me. For what? Why did you yell at me? Why? Ignacio also shared a picture of some of her injuries. This photograph is a far cry from her pictorials as a part-time model actress. Ignacio has since filed a police report. The confrontation happened around 2.20 p.m. at the Eagle Rock Plaza. She says that by sharing her story along with the pictures of the assailants, she can add her voice against discrimination and to find justice. Ignacio admits she's still feeling some of the physical pain from the alleged attack. However, what's more painful is the trauma she's experienced. She does tell us that she has returned to work since the incident. Steve Angeles, ABS-CBN News, Los Angeles. A Beaverton, Oregon woman is apologizing after her racist rant against a Filipina in Portland was posted on Facebook and viewed millions of times. Filipina Selena Kyrell of Vancouver, Washington posted the video to her Facebook page on September 12th showing Sierra Measle and her friend next to Kyrell's car at a parking lot. The September 11 incident began when Measle insinuated that Kyrell could not drive because she's Asian, followed by more insults. This is gonna be so good. About what? That you're illegal crossing the border. And your parents probably had to work for just to get here. In her post, Kyrell said, quote, I want to make sure she gets seen and her racist, ignorant behavior is exposed. It soon was. The video was viewed more than 2.5 million times and netizens soon identified her. Mizo, who is reportedly of Native American descent, apologized in an Instagram post for her quote, ignorant and hateful comments, and says she plans to turn this negative situation into a positive learning experience. Kyrell said she will eventually forgive Mizo. Meanwhile, in a later post, Kyrell 
As we all know, we live in a world of see something, say something. Well, a waitress who saw a man hurling vile, racist insults at a family celebrating a birthday wasn't about to let him do that. So she spoke up and she kicked him out. Well, now she's being hailed as a hero. And we should warn you, what this guy said is really upsetting. She is a hero among us. Get out! A waitress is being hailed today for coming to the defense of a family that was being targeted in a racist rant. You need to leave. You do not talk about that like that. You need to leave. Asian piece of you, oh my right God! Now. Get out of here! Yeah, I'm out. Get out! The man you see here is the CEO of a tech startup. Trump's gonna f you. For some reason, he launched a vile tirade against an Asian American family at a restaurant in Carmel Valley, California. Raymond Oroso says his family was celebrating his wife's birthday when they came under verbal assault. We were about to have to search phone and, and videotape him. Get out of here! Yeah, I'm out. Get out! That's when the waitress stepped in and told the man to take a hike. Like now. You are not allowed here. I already, I already put my Do not talk to our guests like that. Get out now. Who are these They are value guests. Oh, are they? Yeah. Yes. 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 I can't thank her enough. Uh, we should we should have a lot more people like her. So who is the hero waitress? Her name is Jenica Cochran. She's also a yoga instructor. The man was identified as Michael Lofthouse. Even his own mother is shocked, saying, we are completely devastated and appalled by his behavior. Today, Lofthouse issued this apology. My behavior in the video is appalling. This was clearly a moment where I lost control and made incredibly hurtful and divisive comments. I would like to deeply apologize to the family. Do I accept the apology? Uh, no, I don't because it, 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 wasn't, uh, it wasn't heartfelt. He didn't mean it. You are not allowed here ever. The waitress says she hopes her story will inspire people to be kind to their waitresses. Taking a break from her frontline work as a nurse amid the pandemic, this Filipina who only wants to be identified as Carol went on a hike in Marin County's Mount Tamalpais with her husband Hiroshi, who took this video and her two children, ages 11 and 6, and their dog Fluffy on July 4th. And just as they were reaching the end of their four-hour trek, they encountered this woman who blocked their daughter from passing through, claiming they were breaking the law by bringing their dog into the woods when dogs are allowed on leash in the trail. The woman then tells them to go back to where they came from, and when the family refused, she threatened to call the police. No, she doesn't need to know where our car is. Come on, let's go. Keep going. Can't be in this country. You know, how can you tell somebody they can be in this country over a dog? So Carol spoke up and put the woman in her place. Oh yeah? You need to mind your business. Good. After this encounter in the woods, Carol and her family did not tell authorities. But her husband did post a video on YouTube, which as of July 9 had close to 400,000 views. And local media took notice. And the woman was identified by viewers as Beth Tasca, who was employed as the chief people officer at Topa Equities. The company released a statement to local media saying that following an internal review of the incident, they have accepted the resignation of Tasca, stressing the company does not condone racism or discrimination of any kind in any form. For her part, Tasca said she deeply respects the rights of all people and regrets her conversation did not illustrate this and wants to work towards unity. But she also added that what was shown on video does not really depict what happened and that what she was saying was being muffled by her mask. Carol said that this was the first time she and her kids experienced racism. Her Japanese-American husband Hiroshi has admitted to being discriminated before. What bothered me was my daughter. She saw, she saw the whole thing and she's already 11. You know, for her to hear somebody say this to her mother, which also basically implies to her, it, it, she was not sure what was going on. And so we had to talk to her. And my son is only six, so he couldn't understand, but we had to talk to my daughter. And it's sad, but I feel like it's the reality of things. 
you know, unfortunately. As for the woman who has earned the nickname Park Ranger Karen, Carol has this to say. I don't know her personally. I don't know what her life was. And I, I'm not going to condone her action to be acceptable either. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're all humans. Um, we are not perfect. And despite their horrific experience, the family managed to find some humor, ending their now viral video with an ode to their Matipu, the alleged four-legged culprit whose presence initiated the confrontation with Park Ranger Karen. Steve Angelis, ABS-CBN News. The video has gotten millions of views since the person who lives here posted it on social media. He was using chalk to write Asian Americans are facing discrimination not felt since the Japanese American internment camps during World War II. High unemployment and boycotts of businesses have ravaged their communities. As Weisha Zhang reports, there is also a disturbing trend of racist attacks. Oh my, Asian. Oh my God. Get out of here. These are the kinds of attacks Asian Americans have faced this year. Every disease that ever came from China, homie. Everything comes from China. It's fucking disgusting. I don't think that there had ever been a time where I was scared or fearful of my life because of my race. 26-year-old Victor Yang says he will never forget that day in March when a bike ride with his girlfriend on these familiar Maryland trails ended with a frantic call for help. DC 911. I uh, ran out on the bike trail. I think his kid's chasing us when we're off. Stop it! Okay! You're damn it! What was shocking was these individuals kept on following us, then taunting us, saying coronavirus or COVID-19. What happened to Yang is one of over 2,800 hate incidents reported against Asian Americans across the country since the pandemic started seven months ago. A nearly 845% increase compared to all the reported cases in the last three years combined. What are you doing in this country? What am I doing in this country? Oh, you look at this, this, this camera. What am I doing in this country? Yeah. What am I doing in this country? I'm an American people. citizen. Asian American hate is as old as American history. 83-year-old actor and civil rights advocate George Takei was four years old when Pearl Harbor was attacked in 1941. And overnight, this country was swept up by suspicion and fear and naked outright hatred we had nothing to do with pearl harbor there was no charge other than looking like this so it's no surprise to decay that asian americans today are shouldering blame for the coronavirus american said we don't want you here that's why we elected president trump especially he says since the attacks are starting from the top we have political leadership that is using that and constantly using the term Chinese virus. I would like to begin uh, by announcing some important developments in our war against the Chinese virus. President Trump first publicly said the phrase Chinese virus to describe COVID-19 on March 18th. Five days later, he crossed out the language from his prepared remarks, declaring this instead. It's very important that we totally protect our Asian American community in the United States and all around the world. But as the pandemic worsened, he resurrected the rhetoric. Mr. Trump even brought up Beijing when I asked him about testing. Why is this a global competition to you if everyday Americans are still losing their lives and we're still seeing more cases every day? Well, they're losing their lives everywhere in the world. And maybe that's a question you should ask China. Don't ask me, ask China that question, okay? When you ask them that question, you may get a very unusual answer. Yes, behind you, please. What, sir, why are you saying that to me specifically? I'm telling you, I'm not saying it specifically to anybody. I'm saying it to anybody that would ask a nasty question That's like that. That's not a nasty Please question. go ahead. During a campaign rally in June, President Trump's tough talk took another turn. I can name Kung Flu. I can name 19 different versions of names. 
The Justice Department included COVID-19 backlash in their hate crimes training, but has yet to take additional measures to combat the anti-Asian discrimination. During the George W. Bush administration, the DOJ formed a special task force after the 9-11 terrorist attacks to prosecute crimes against Muslim Americans. People were afraid to come out every time they came out to go buy groceries. They looked behind their backs. They, they're fearful of being attacked just because they were Chinese. A lack of federal help isn't stopping community activists like Carlin Chan. Since March, he and his group of volunteers have been patrolling Manhattan's Chinatown, his hometown of over 60 years. We may actually see more rising hate crimes. Staying quiet is not an option anymore. In Culver City, California, the next generation of Asian Americans, like Tammy Cho, couldn't keep silent anymore either. If we do not address this issue now and continue to have dialogue, we're going to see history repeat itself again. Cho co-created the group Hate is a Virus. Hate the virus. virus. Hate is a virus. virus. Hoping to raise a million dollars to help keep family businesses and restaurants impacted by COVID-19 afloat. Whatever it will take to stop the discrimination from spreading. I do think COVID in some ways was a catalyst for these issues coming into the surface. Back in Washington, D.C., Victor Yang, who now works for the Florida Democratic Party, says bringing light to incidents like the one he experienced is critical to move forward. The last thing that we want in this country is more violence. We are citizens like every other American. Coming up, a new generation of the model minority joins the social justice movement.